Hello, I'm Avery Wallace, and I'm so honored to have the opportunity to speak to you all this evening. Astrophysics has been my passion since 2021, when I found a home in space science and an interest in physics. Since then, I've devoted my free time and my summers to physics, studying at UF here in Florida, and most recently, Northeastern University in Boston this last summer. I'm a DP HL physics student here at CDS, and I hope what I tell you about this evening impacts you beyond just your perception of the subject of physics, but of science as a whole. This is accelerating into the unknown. Our universe is comprised of three components. Can anyone guess what they are? Anything you can think of, just off the top of your head. Planets. Planets. Anyone else? Saturn. One more. Anything else? Matter. Matter? That's a good guess. Well, all of those things actually fall under one category, including matter. They're all atoms. And atoms only make up 5% of our universe. What about the other 95%? Dark matter is a not so mysterious concept. We have photographic evidence of it. It's very commonly known. And yet, it only takes up 25% of the universe. The other 70% is this mysterious concept called dark energy, something we know exists but are unsure of what it is. But how? Well, as most concepts in physics began, it is the band-aid answer to a very complex unknown. To understand what this means and why this is important, we must first take a look at the very beginning. There's this fairly unknown theory that I don't expect any of you to know. It's very, very, very underground and definitely not the name of a TV show. The Big Bang Theory is the idea that the universe began as particles colliding into each other and creating an explosion of other particles, which collided further, creating more and more over and over until eventually we get stars and then gases and then planets and then us. General physics tells us that an object in motion stays in motion. That essentially, if there's nothing stopping it, it's not stopping. And if there's nothing pushing it, it's not speeding up. These concepts, which define our most basic understandings of physics, when applied to the Big Bang, tell scientists that the universe should be forever expanding at a constant rate, or more accurately, that the gravity of the center of the universe should be slowing down the expansion until it becomes strong enough to pull everything back in and we start all over again. But this isn't the case. In fact, the opposite is true. Our universe is actually accelerating in its expansion, and dark energy is the developed solution to this big, fat question mark. Dark energy is the newest frontier of astrophysics and cosmology. But today, I'm going to show you why you care, and how the far reaches of our universe can tell us more about our existence than we can fathom. So let's talk about how dark energy was discovered. Like any auntie on her third divorce, it's got a long dating history. And by that, I mean that scientists were playing around with the concept before they even knew it. Newton's laws of gravity are a stranger to no one. They're actually the reason I'm standing here today in more ways than one. But as humanity's understanding of the universe expanded, our laws of gravity had to be refined by another famous theory. And no, I don't mean Einstein's E equals MC squared. I mean general relativity. Einstein's theory of general relativity is a complex set of six equations in one. I mean, look at that thing. Yeah, we're not touching that with a 10-foot pole. But this equation contains the first sliver of evidence of dark energy. This term is still controversial in the physics community today. It's called the cosmological constant. Now, the original version of this equation, without this term, models a universe that either expands until it rips apart or contracts until it crushes in on itself. And you might be thinking, well, where's the issue? The universe is expanding. And to that I say, you're right. Good job, and thank you for paying attention. But the problem was nobody knew that at the time. The cosmos wasn't discovered to be expanding until 13 years later. And so Einstein created the cosmological constant as some unknown quantity that counteracts the universe's gravity, modeling a static, unmoving universe. Plot twist, Einstein was wrong. But now we have a timeline. We've already covered Newton and Einstein, and then comes the Shapley-Curtis debate. This was a big moment for the field of physics, not only as the first ever public physics debate, 
But as according to NASA, a clear example of humanity once again striving to find its place in the cosmic order. Or essentially two dudes talking about the meaning of our existence. What was being debated was the scale of the universe. Now, the debate was obviously a lot more nuanced than that, and in the end, both sides were correct in different ways. But what's more important than the actual debate are the implications. This debate is evidence of the importance of physics to philosophical thought. The more information we gain, the more questions we have, and the more we realize how rare our existence is. And then, eight years later, Edwin Hubble discovered that the universe was indeed expanding. This was a big discovery found with a phenomenon called redshift. Redshift is a tool used by scientists to determine whether celestial objects are moving farther away from Earth or closer to Earth. As an object moves farther away from Earth, the color wavelengths it gives off are stretched, and they shift more towards the red end of the visible spectrum. Versus when that object moves closer, those color wavelengths are compressed, and they shift towards the blue end of the visible spectrum. This is called being redshifted versus blue shifted. And Edwin Hubble found that supernovas and galaxies in all directions were redshifted, signifying an ever-expanding universe in all directions. Hubble's law relates the distance of these, superno these supernovas and their redshift. And the Hubble constant is a term that defines the scale of the size and age of the universe. It relates speed and distance of celestial objects, and the idea that the universe's expansion is being slowed down by its own gravity is actually derived from this term specifically. Now, the graph of this equation was a key aspect in the creation of the Big Bang Theory, which we've already talked about. It was found that distance and redshift have a proportional linear relationship, meaning that farther away objects are moving away faster, proving cosmic expansion. This graph was also the result of a second finding from Hubble, that while our existence is rare, our patch of space is not. Hubble said that the universe is uniformly filled with galaxies. We are not the center of the universe. There is most certainly a planet exactly like ours with life on it. And yet no life quite like humanity exists that we know of. So are we special? Or are we just clumps of matter floating through more clumps of matter? It wasn't until a telescope with Hubble's namesake that the nature of the universe's expansion was uncovered only 26 years ago. With modern technology, we're able to look deeper into space and further back in time to see that the expansion has actually been accelerating, amazingly going against all principles previously theorized. And with this discovery, we come to our beautiful band-aid solution of dark energy an invisible driving force with so much history that I've been talking about it for roughly eight and a half minutes, and I've barely scratched the surface of the concept. Dark energy is stronger than all black holes in existence, and yet we can't see it, and it is actively pushing all celestial objects, including Earth, into the far reaches of space. So now we know what dark energy is. Where do we go from here? Well, as an extremely new topic on the frontier of science, scientists are still researching supernovas to better find how the universe will continue to expand. And there are three popular theories. They're all based on the Hubble plot. This takes us all the way back to Einstein's general relativity. I promise I showed you that crazy headache-inducing equation for a reason. So, either dark energy continues to push the cosmos apart until it rips, or the universe continues to expand at a constant rate, not slowing down or speeding up, just simply existing, like Einstein theorized. Or in my opinion, the scariest option, that one day, dark energy loses to gravity, and everything suddenly comes collapsing in on itself, and, well, crunch. But we don't have to worry about that, right? So what does this mean? This means that our understanding of the universe, our place in it, and the laws of physics that govern it are rudimentary at best. Aristotle famously said, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. And that applies more than ever to physics and our understanding of how we got here. The more we understand about space and the vastness in which we exist, the more we uncover about the nature of that existence. 
and we realize that we are a paradox, a special existence in an unspecial space, both an anomaly and just clumps of matter like everything else. Our universe is an ever-expanding system, and we are constantly finding out more. Physics research is so important to our understanding of ourselves and how we came to be. And dark energy is opening doors for researchers to better explore the unknown that we are actively hurtling towards as I speak. So, moving forward, literally. Well, we know so little about dark energy. So in order to find out more, researchers are making 3D maps of the universe to better explore how objects move and possibly even see how gravity and dark energy interact. This is done by making 2D maps, which are actually open to viewing for the public on LegacySurvey.org. They're really cool. You should check them out for yourself. But on these 2D maps, objects are selected, and their distance from Earth and redshift are calculated to create the third dimension of the map. The 2D map that I just referenced is one used by the Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument, or DESI, one of many surveys on dark energy. Another of these is Dark Energy Survey, or DES, an internationally collaborative mapping project created by the US Department of Energy and National Science Foundation. It uses an astronomically large camera, pun intended, in Chile to take photos of deep space and find and map new galaxies and supernovas. Now, one large question that surveys like DES and DESI are trying to answer is whether or not dark energy is constant or changing over time which a lot of data has begun to support. Lots of recent studies, specifically by DESI, tell us that there are even more possibilities than the ones that I've mentioned today. There are so many theories that explain Hubble's findings and align with Einstein's theories that are beginning to gain support from models and observations in the modern era. This is my favorite part of the talk today because all of you get a taste of what it's like to be a physics student since this is the part where I tell you that everything that I've talked about today is likely wrong. One of these theories that within recent weeks has been garnering more merit is the timescale cosmology model. This is one of those instances where everything I've told you is wrong. The timescale model says that dark energy doesn't exist and is really a time dilation illusion. Time dilation is a complex concept that I suggest you do your own research on, but essentially, the theory is based around the idea that there are denser spots of the galaxy with more matter and more gravity, and that time is slowed down by gravity compared to void spaces with less matter and less gravity. Recent data from nearby supernovae actually support this theory, but farther away supernova do not, so more investigation is definitely needed, but it goes entirely against all current dark energy theories. And this goes to show even more how the vast possibilities of our universe can manifest in contradictory and interesting ways. This year's theme is the power of inquiry. Progress, innovation, and understanding at the heart of that. And nothing pushes the boundaries of our knowledge quite like physics. It's part of why I like the subject so much. By now you're probably wondering, that's great, but what's the point? Why is this girl talking to me? Well, as a kid, I always had so many questions about the world and how things worked. Why being most common of all? I'm sure I was insufferable. Still am. So shout out to anyone who's had to do with me asking so many questions about why things are the way that they are. But when I found the subject of physics, I realized that all of my questions could be answered. I hope you walk away today with one lesson. That when you take the time to push the boundaries of your knowledge, view the world through a different lens, and specifically have an open mind about subjects you wouldn't typically be interested in, like physics, your worldview changes. Groundbreaking science comes from being inquisitive, and physics is all around us in so many ways. I want you all to do research on things you find interesting in your free time. Be inquisitive, ask questions about how things work and why they are the way they are. Who knows, you might find your dream job like me. I hope you walk away today with a newfound respect for physics, some new things to think about when you can't sleep, or maybe some new things to keep you up at night, and a new perspective of your place in the universe. Thank you.